Uh, enough talking as if we were porn. Let's talk about porn, shall we? Uh, actually, hold on. I need to remember something. Okay. Oh, Test. All right, here we go. Let's do the thing. Uh, uh, we do this. <gasps> Good, good, good. I can't see you at the moment. Yes, we heard it. Okay, cool. Thank you. And three, and two, and one. It's Sunday, September 7th, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Instagram and Links, episode number 524. And we have with us... Daddy Hadrian! Yay! I don't have my claps all the applause. Where's my applause? <laughs> I don't know where it is. I can't find it. Anyways, there's applause. <laughs> oh, Golf here it is. Clap. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Love you. I really love you. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. Uh, I just realized we were doing everything in in uh, uh, clockwise order. Started Yay. up here, and then down below me was was Damon, and then on the left side, bottom left was Gary. And uh, uh, so, and then yeah, we're do, <laughs> doing our little Brady Bunch sort of thing. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay. Oh, no! <laughs> Jesus. Okay. You said you wanted to be okay. first. <laughs> okay, enough of that. <laughs> Obviously, it's the Silly Sunday Show. Uh, uh, it, just, just as a side note, uh, 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 uh I, um, uh, I I didn't get to sleep until like one, ah. So I woke up at like five thirty. So, anyways, have fun, Gary. Enjoy. What are we talking about? Uh, so <laughs> I think we might be wrapping up our uh multi piece series called "What Porn Taught Us." Welcome to part number three. Nice. I like how all three of us did it the same way. <laughs> As opposed to this. Or that. But anyways, that's a visual joke for those or of you that are listening. Or five, Because, like, like the, from uh, uh, the Rhythm Nation, uh, uh, the way that they do the count of five, four, three, two, one. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. So, anyways, uh, previously we talked about what porn taught us, like how it molded us, um, and what we thought it did for our self-image and our confidence. And one of the things that we had kind of mentioned, I think the last time was about the future. And by that, like uh, I was thinking in terms of what porn will do to future generations. Um, Conceptually, like I'm just going to throw out a couple of of, like questions and just, you know, we'll kind of go from there. Like, will there be porn in the future? What will porn necessarily be like, do we think? And will it have an impact or will it just become a part of the norm? And we won't even really refer to it as, as, as porn. And we'll start moving it to really calling it adult media. And, you know, and like, so, hmm. because I think for me, generationally, less and less seems to be happening in terms of like people caring 
like having these like social mores and like concerns about you know being prim and proper and all that i think people are are now moved <laughs> more into a healthy i don't give a flying fuck kind of mode about a lot of things but like <laughs> well, true and, and i'll say this like i was just thinking of this uh well this morning so while i was on a certain website that has lots of streaming webcams um <laughs> i happen to notice how many straight men are in touch with their buttholes and they, <laughs> They are yeah. enjoying devices that do things. Yeah. And yeah. Those what love senses or whatever are quite popular, especially on like certain sites and, you know, certain coinage will allow those things to go off. It's kind of, I don't know. I think it's a very interesting thought, like realizing, you know, everyone realizes that men's there, that's that. There's one of those pleasure centers right there. That prostate, that prostate, that prostate. Like, and hitting it causes sensations. And Right. Or yeah. that just the, that the butthole in general, you know, has oh, thousands right. of nerve endings and therefore, you know, is prime real estate for fun. And, mm-hmm. and, and you know, both gay guys are willing to give you money for you to play with it. <laughs> that's a that. Let's not, oh, let's not minimize the fact that there is monetary enjoyment in addition to the neurological enjoyment. Well, no, right, right. And, but but isn't that interesting, though? Like, I think there was a time when, they, like, oh, that was a no-go zone. It didn't oh, yeah. matter unless you put, like, a comma in that dollar amount, like, for, for the play. <laughs> like, now, I don't, I don't know if you could really call it gay for play, like, conceptually. Gay okay, like for pay, you mean? Right. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I just think they're more willing to be in tune with themselves. Just like I have a, I have a body. This is physically what I have. And this is what brings me pleasure. So I think that's kind of falling away. And it makes me wonder like, what will, what will porn teach people in the future? If there even is such a concept as porn? Mm -hmm. Well, you can also, you also have to think of, of having your whole played with doesn't necessarily need a, 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 in the case of our case, uh, a man to do it. You can know a woman can play with it. It's just they don't. They would have to use like a toy to 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 do it versus a, an actual penis. Oh, that also, they don't necessarily have Peggy. to toy. Yeah, Peggy. <laughs> well, <laughs> Peggy can peg you if, if you want her to. Right, and now that we're moving into, I think, an evolution, uh, I guess, uh, psychologically, or at least in terms of, like, understanding that there, we don't live in a binary world, even in terms of just, like, physicality, mm-hmm. that, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll own this. Like, so this is a little bit of a throwback to, like, the first episode of the series. One of the things I became totally mesmerized by was hermaphrodites. When I was growing up and I saw women, like, what looked like a woman physically had you know mammaries otherwise boobs tits and like but then also had a penis but without the nuts but the penis got hard i was all like <laughs> like my <laughs> well, could not conceive or understand what i was seeing in a magazine i was just like what like because I grew up like understanding that there, there was a binary concept, like there was men and there was women, not understanding the whole like in between concepts and DNA mm-hmm. and chromosomes and like all this other stuff that can happen, yeah. you know. And then it wasn't until yeah. I became an adult and I started putting things together from a biological standpoint and recognizing like, oh yeah, there's a whole there's a whole bunch of different possibilities mm-hmm. of what the human body can consist of and what it produces. So. Now more yeah. than ever, I kind of wonder if that's, I don't want to say becoming acceptable or the norm, but if it will be more like people don't really think about it or focus on that. It certainly mm. led to a more educated populace. What used to be, you know, the, the freak video. Oh, I found this one video. It's the only one I've ever found. Now it's so common and people can look it up and it's there. And, you know, you see that there's, when you see there's 100,000 videos of whatever you're searching for, that's pretty clear validation that this is not a niche. This is something that is widespread. And Fair. I think almost every genre, as long as the internet's been running now for 20-something, almost 30 years now, or it, it, 30, it is celebrated its 30th anniversary, but porn on the internet took a little while longer. Um, <laughs> but it, but ne- this proliferation is definitely led to a more educated po- populace oh. about just sexual positions and sexual health and body capabilities and limitations and consent and just the whole spectrum of, of sexual health has improved greatly just because mm-hmm. of its accessibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just, 
And just to be fair, it, 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 it's more of porn took a little bit longer to become pervasive. Uh, right. Because I don't know about you, but yes, before the year 2000, I was on a Usenet news group looking at porn. So Absolutely. it's been around. It, I bet you anything. One of the first things that was ever uploaded on the DARPA net, probably just one little image that took forever to download was some sort of porn. It was probably just hidden away in one little spot and only a few people, because there was few people who had access to the DARPA net before it became the internet. There was a porn image, probably of some okay. chick, because, you know, toxic ma masculinity back in that, that those days was was Are pervasive. Not. So, But be, being able to search the internet anonymously back then, more so now, I, don't, I think, mm -hmm. I wonder if we might have lived in some sort of golden age of the internet when the information on it was more accurate ads and danger and uh, attacks and other things weren't so prevalent it was mm -hmm. a safer it was a safer place it was much more localized to uh most of the united states and in universities and that sort of thing and, and aol and your you know certain playgrounds but we we access the internet in its more purest form of what it was built to do and we we experienced some of that media in its earliest days and watched and, and watched, you know, one blowjob video turn into a, I can do that too. And and people being able to not only post content anonymously without their showing their face, but also search for it. Someone who is who may have hyper masculine ideals might be able to go search for things that are that would, that they thought about but never had a chance to explore because they live somewhere without Fact. any about that. But they well, can talk to the search bar pretty easy. And and I think that means like in another decade to fifteen years, we're going to see in our own country here in the United States, like. Uh, quite an interesting transition of things because we still have lots of rural areas that do not have high speed internet mm -hmm. to this day. Mm -hmm. And I think once we move into that, like my uh, one of my coworkers who's a supervisor, uh, manager in training actually said to me, what do you think will happen when 5G really comes around? And I said, oh, it'll completely change the landscape and it'll change it where I live because where I live, we don't have much in terms of fiber optic. Right. So, mm -hmm. like, the fact that 5G can be better and faster than your own, like, in your home internet delivery, I'm like, it will it will revolutionize conceptually, like, how speed is considered and, like, data and that. And I think that companies that are not moving ahead or conceptually thinking about that are going to find themselves in a lot of trouble, actually. Right. Um, in these areas but my point is is like as that technology mm -hmm. continues to advance and we can hopefully fight these issues about bringing fiber and high speed to like rural areas kind of like utilities back in you know the early 1900s mm -hmm. i think that will really change things because you will have people in small town areas who are able to pretty much damn near see anything they want online right Key tag word search done. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like, and so that, that makes me kind of wonder, like, I remember when I was growing up that there seemed to be, conceptually, there seemed to be a small set of kinks or, uh, and I don't even know if I really want to call them kinks, but like uniqueness about what got you off, so to speak, or what you were really into. Um, you know, some guys were into panties, some guys were into women's lingerie, some were into women's shoes, um, you know, in terms of like a heteronormative concepts. Um, and then as I find out about gay culture, I'm kind of like, oh, well, we, you know, we switch a panty for a jock strap. Got it. Um, you know, I mean, some of that kind of stuff, but I wonder like if, I don't want to say it's, a, it'll be a race, but if people will be evolving in such a way that they'll be like really honing in specifically towards unique things that work very specifically for them. And like the broader concepts will fall kind of away. Uh -huh. Like there, there won't be as much as a mass population that's into pick, you know, yeah. pick thing. Every, everybody's going to find more, more of their kink. Yeah. And I think yeah. you already see that. Like, I, the one that immediately comes to mind that seems to be where the zeitgeist is and everybody seems to be into it is putt play. That's a Perfect. that's a very, fairly new thing. And it's been boiling up for a long time, but it's become a flag of multiple kinks all wrapped into one. Or mm -hmm. the possibility, there's a spectrum of kinks that come with it. And it, yeah. it represents multiple things. It represents, um, you know, and and the, the, the quieter introverted uh, 
side of, of the spectrum of people who, who the way they communicate is much more internal and they're very quiet and, and reserved. And then you have the opposite side. You have the people who are into leather play and hardcore BDSM. And it pulls both of those people into the same uh, kink flag with a huge spectrum of uh, mm-hmm. capabilities that it could represent. So I think you yeah. see some of that happening already. It's, it's, it's a much more egregious one, but I think you'll see smaller, low-level kinks that get rebranded yeah. and flagged like that as you move forward. Yeah, I can see that being a thing for sure. Um, and I, I mean, I, I wonder if like, I don't know how much porn plays into this or adult media, especially adult social media, so to speak. But like, I, I think saline play, like as an example, is what's on my mind right now, has yeah. been around for a little while, but it seems there's more prevalence or mm-hmm. it's that. But I don't remember what the word is. The concept of like I'm because I'm aware of it, it appears more when in fact there is no real like increase in, in its existence. It's just I see it more. It's kind of like yeah. you, you know, you buy a red car and then everywhere you go you see fucking red cars. Um yeah. Yeah. like conceptually, but I was thinking about that recently because I actually heard on a podcast I was listening to where the co hosts were talking about that they wanted to bring on a guest who was willing to come on that has a pumped dick. And they said they know a lot of people who have like injected their their penises, but they don't they don't want to come on, and they think like there's some concern about like ridicule and some other stuff, which I think is pretty interesting. But then they were having this discussion about like what is actually used, and what I found interesting is that one of the co-hosts knew about saline and how the body you know ends up absorbing it, and you know so basically the body goes back to set base. Um, so mm-hmm. like you can enlarge like a scrotum, you know, or, or different stuff. And I was kind of like, oh, look at that. Someone would be a little educated. But, you know, then there was a part <laughs> of me that's like, well, how how prevalent is that? Like conceptually and stuff. And then they also brought up an interesting point in which they said, you know, but, you know, you have to be careful. And the reason they talked about uh, saline was because they mentioned that, you know, silicone can be incredibly dangerous to and toxic mm-hmm. to the body and that people have died. And they just kind of left it at that. And I was kind of like. Well, maybe that's like where we are, you know, that some things bubble up and kind of, yeah. you know, uh, educate in various ways. Yeah, I think what as I think we're getting on is that people are slowly being more free with the things that they enjoy sexually. Right. You know, I think that's something that I, I've, I know personally have noticed. I mean, hell, if you remember the whole um tumblr slash twitter like transfer like everything kind of you know moved and i wasn't expecting it to happen so quickly but holy shit like all these things were happening and all these people and i'm finding out things about certain friends of mine that i didn't know at first but thanks to their now updated and changed over twitter to kind of backlash say their the tumblr stuff i'm learning a lot more about the kinks and things that they enjoy and 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 they're doing so unashamedly if that yeah. makes sense you know, people are putting their things out there, their kinks out there, the things that they enjoy out there. And I feel that it, as we move towards the future, that's going to be more acceptable and more okay. I'm okay with you doing certain things to your body that I know personally care for, about because that's your body and that's your, you're able to, you can choose to do that if you want to. Right. Go right on ahead and do that. I'm not going to do it, but I'm not going to yuck your yum, as we've mm-hmm. talked about often on the show. Um, uh, and allow you to do what you need to do as long as it's you know everyone always says as long as it's not hurting anyone but you know let's not well limit it to that. Certain and there's two forces at work there the one force is that a you know internet is becoming more accessible more people can access it older people can access it but also those older people are aging out of the brackets that don't even know mm-hmm. what search is because generation x is becoming our old fuddy duddies they're they're the ones who are getting up there in age as as the baby boomers fall off the map so they, so that's also something. The, the people who are older also don't share those shameful views. Generation X was much more open about about sexuality, mm-hmm. being able to express yourself, and they they harbor some of that weirdness. They have, have some slut shaming problems, but they're getting there. They're getting healthier, and they're opening up. and And then you have millennials quaking coming up behind them with they they don't give a goddamn. I think we're going to be really hard pressed to find a millennial political candidate here in about twenty years that we're not going to be able to find matching new picks of. Mm-hmm. Because they are very, very open about it, and they and before they had things like Snapchat and what WhatsApp, they could delete your pictures in ten seconds or whatever. We were all sending in the clear. Mm, yeah. And, and personally, nowadays, if if somebody uh, sent somebody a dick pic and 
for some reason somebody's trying to slander a politician with a dick pic i'm like yes and you haven't sent one before right. <laughs> so, well I like mean, and look at, but look at what happened like anthony weiner like unfortunate naming you know <laughs> has that whole circumstance come out about like that he sent a picture of his wanger you know to somebody and all i can think is who cares who who seriously gives a shit? Like, why are we? Oh, we're gonna have this whole morality concept issue about the fact that they're well, a politician and da 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 da. And I'm kind of like, mm -hmm. he was married. Just to yeah, put but a that's not my sanctity on it. He was married. If he was single and it was someone, then you're like, okay, who gives a fuck? And I no, think but the, the, but what but what that. business is it of mine as the lay public? He does not personally represent me for my state or my district area. Oh yeah, and you know I'm kind of like, so what? You know, like, I mean, it's kind of like I posed this after the Clinton scandal. Please excuse everybody while we talk politics briefly in a sideways thing about porn. <laughs> um, so, like, and I posed this actually on uh, somebody, actually on one particular person uh, who's been on the podcast. I said, did anyone ever consider that maybe Hillary and Bill were actually in an open relationship and that it all just went to shit sideways because people found out, like, and they had to make it into something like they had to have this whole like it was wrong and blah, blah, blah. I'm kind of like, really? Like, I don't think you're far off the mark there. <laughs> I'm like, so like, that's the whole thing that bothers me is like if they did have an open relationship, like, yeah, it was way before the country was ready to understand that. But it would explain a hell of a lot. Like. You know, and the down unfortunate side is that everybody else like had to stick their nose into it. And it's kind of like, I don't give a shit what he did to a blue dress. Whatever. Like people sell shit on the Internet all the time with DNA on it. Ain't no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, they I do. Mean, I mean, fair. It's that whole it's a, it was, it, that, that's, that's because an it's true. changing population and the way they feel about embarrassment and shame and what is and isn't shameful and sexuality. And that's that, mm -hmm. you well, know, it's, it's, there it's were dealing... people who thought that was the most salacious, wonderful thing you could get on the Internet. And now you could, as you're right, as time goes on, we're like, so. So you're right. Millennials who come out with dick pics for so there's going to be a vast majority of the population who's going to give a fuck. Yeah. I think there was a vast majority of the population that didn't give up a fuck in the first place. The only problem is that we have all these is that the people who are talking on the news and um, and everything are those people that do find it scandalous uh, because of their old way of thinking of everything and are yeah. just open to the concept. I'm like, like, OK, so he got his dick sucked. How does this affect how well he can lead a country? Question mark. Well, yeah, everyone, if you want to, if you want to, like, focus on female politicians and talk about their time of the month, can we talk about the fact that men have a time of the month? Thank you very much. Like, if you withhold sex, like they go crazy. So, like, maybe having a blowjob was actually the better, the best things that happened could have happened in the country. <laughs> I mean, come on, like, <clears throat> well, well, yeah, that's why I always thought the Michael Winsky scandal was like, oh, so he got a blowjob. He's a man. Well, right, and so Adrian, you know, <laughs> like I think. Shrug. I think your point is well taken about like in the 15 to 20 years to come like this that stuff will probably be divisive to certain people but more and more people will not care because right. eventually mm -hmm. someone somewhere sometime either the future of good morning america or the today show or something will end up saying who hasn't sent a blank picture to somebody else that's right actually that's probably been said before it's just one of those obscure things that nobody actually talks about. I don't know if, if Huda and, like, you know, <laughs> Katie Couric and them can really kind of yeah. say that. I don't know if any of them kind of said that just now. But your point is taken. Yeah. Like, you know, you know that we're living in that age now where that's actually a valid question. And so in the future, it may I mean, not Fox News will really always matter. be the, the accusation and stuck in the old ways of propri propriety. Uh, although, isn't it usually the... the the, the Republicans that are doing all the you doth protest too much. Oh, yeah. Well, I feel more often than not that it's progressive people who point at the conservatives who are like, oh, look at you getting your hand caught in a cookie jar. Like, do it the exact thing that you like say that shouldn't happen. Oops. So, like, uh, to me, that's just like... Uh, it's <laughs> and all, all, all the Democrats just be like, yeah, and? <laughs> well, I, well, I mean, I just kind of feel like, you know, it's... <laughs> it's going to take more time for people to come to terms with things and be, and for things to be okay and be acceptable as it like, you know, it's, it's not, it doesn't even draw their attention or kind of blip. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think about this now, like how many people 
with smart devices don't have some form of adult media or whatever on it. Yeah. Okay, can we just say Aren't what we... it is and just call it porn? This adult media thing just, well, just sounds... There's a difference, though. Adult media and porn, there has to be a level of separation. Is the stuff that I produce myself and send to my friends porn? No, because I'm not meaning to sell it. It's not being produced in some way. There's no editing. There's nothing there. I produce, I made something, and I sent it to a friend of mine. It's media, and it is meant to be adult to adult. So I, I think that the, the, the separation there is important because it, we're pointing out that I am not making this for distribution. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a sense of, of understanding that this media that I've created is not meant for distribution. I'm sending it to you and you only as a private thing. But it is pornographic. It could be. What is porn? Porno is a Latin word, isn't it? And doesn't it mean. <laughs> Hold on. Mean I know. It's actually it, Greek. So it's literally, <laughs> we're watching prostitute video. That would be pornographic. So prostitute images. Porto, portographos writing about prostitutes from the mid 19th century Greek. Yeah, so I'm not a prostitute, so that's adult media. Well, that's I'm just kind of an debate. adult making stuff that I don't want a child to, or a minor to see. Well, so, so yeah, I mean, <sighs> this is worth discussing. Anyway, oh god. <laughs> then Pornhub's yeah. Pornhub is a misnomer. Nope. I mean, they, there there is, there is a bunch of you know, <laughs> well, actual porn, but then there's a lot of adult media. The non-porn so, because they're not being paid for it because they up just somebody uh, uploaded but something. But Pornhub is being paid for it, so that could uh, be considered so. porn. And it's called Pornhub. I don't think it's a misnomer. I think I think once you put it on in a published state, then you've you've changed over from adult media to porn. I don't know. I'm just annoyed by the the separation of the two. I well, think it's so one of those things where it's just kind of like culture. like what the original meaning was no longer really has as much of an effect as as the current culture it's like it's porn. actually I, th- I think getting away from that definition would be great because we're not we're not talking about prostitution in any capacity anymore i yeah. think i think well that's, i never that's i've never thought of porn as prostitution mindset. that's the thing well so here's the it's, thing it's is, just uh, a, the most a, adult adventures you can say most but... most common definition now is printed or visual material containing explicit description or display of sexual organs or activity intended to stimulate erotic rather than aesthetic or emotional feeling. So if Hadrian's sending images of himself with the intention to stimulate other people, it's technically pornography. Okay, It's fair just enough. free porn. It's, you're not paying for it. Oh my god! <laughs> I still win! I win! And as a random misnomer, Google says that in 1994 was the height of the use of word pornography, and it's been falling ever since. Good so, <laughs> everybody's but that, just but that might be porn. part of the whole thing that Hadrian's <laughs> talking about. Like, you know, and that's why I'm saying, like, in the future, that's why I keep saying, like, adult media, because to me that seems to be more uh, inclusive or conceptual as opposed mm-hmm. to... But then again, like, even that's probably, like, archaic in a way, because... I to feel, call it adult versus what? I feel like a, a adult media is is like a very what's the word? Sterile. Clinical. Yeah, sterile. Yeah. Clinical. Clinical. Hmm. I'm fine with clinical. And I don't know about you, but I'm not clinical. <laughs> well, I mean, so you know, where do we think things will go though in in the future? Like, if we could, if we could theoretically you know use a crystal ball and see into things do we think that it will become so massive like pervasive commonplace that it won't really be that you know exclusionary or or like um i'm trying to think of how i want to phrase it like because that we we all grew up in a time of like larry flick like versus the government and fighting mm -hmm. for rights and imagery and um, the and I'm completely the what is the Maplethorpe exhibit and mm-hmm. like all of this stuff about like you know freedom of expression and rights of individuality when it comes to our bodies and what we do with them. So I'm wondering if like that will not be a thing because we will have gotten to a point where it's kind of like I like literally no fucks given like just don't don't care. Yeah, yeah. I think I think porn becomes more optional as time moves on. There's a there's a rubber band of course in the zeitgeist and. People pulled porn really far to the to the right for a while. Like this was a wrong, evil thing, and it has to bounce back, and it becomes 
over commonplace and everybody's invested in it. And I think we've seen that peak already. I think when Chatterbait mm-hmm. first came out, that may have been peak porn a little bit. And there's still some stuff going on, but and it'll eventually and there's a little bit of that that swing back where recently, you know, you had Tumblr with their porn thing earlier, you know, late last year. You have Twitter, which is doing some weird things now. Instagram has started their crackdown. So there's there's things that, that vibrate back and forth and, and it eventually will settle out where porn is just another aspect of our of our of our culture, just like other things that, mm-hmm. that may have been salacious before, whether it was rock and roll or, or gangster rap or yeah. uh, movie houses or what you know, or a skimpy outfits, beds that you know, queen king size beds instead of separate beds. Oh my goodness. You know, yeah. all things you know, things bounce back and forth and I think porn becomes more optional. It's just like, oh, well that's that's what they do. He I, does porn. Yeah. I think I think you're right with with it being kind of more optional, but I think it's but I don't think it's necessarily gonna re- reduce pervasiveness of porn like it may be optional but it's going to be still remain you know freely available it's going to always be there and ready for you mm-hmm. to whenever you need it um, yeah um, i do think i i do think that that because of the pervasiveness of the internet and the accessibility of of porn in or in some way shape or form on online uh, is probably what's helping the what is this, se- sexual revolution i'm not sure if that's the right term of the uh of everybody uh in the world it's just being able to re- to release that because you get to see more as to what right. it is um, you can truly like try to find your king. Really? Yeah, it, it's because it's it's just out there. There's there's you can find it anywhere. So, excuse me. I think there's an alarm that's going off in the other room. So okay. Can you talk amongst yourself? Okay. <laughs> one one thing I've wondered about when it comes to porn is that what else is there to do? I mean, you you can see just about everything now as far as sexual positions, things you can do with various orifices. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's all been done in really high definition at this point. Like for a while there, there was the jump like from crappy web cameras you plug into your computer to get 320p. You could, then you got up to 1080 and then, you know, people were, now it's 4k and 8k. And I'm, I'll be honest, 8k at that point, I'm like, I really didn't need to see your pores (laughs) as you were having sex. I, you know, the glisten of the butt was fine. I didn't need to see the actual sweat excretion. So yeah. I think that we're getting to a point where what else is there left to do besides seeing someone modern doing it or besides situations that come and go in, in the zeitgeist, you know, like for a while there was the bang bus thing. That seemed to be something everyone was into. Now, if you look at uh, Porn Page of Pornhub, the big popular thing seems to be stepsister porn, which is bizarre. There's a lot of there's a lot of strange spectrums that come and go on the front page of different porn companies that are that are more commonly searched for. Mm. I don't know if like produced professional film quote unquote as media will really continue on after a certain point right because we've moved we've moved it over like anybody could make anything like as an as an example jim and damon could start their own thing if they wanted to and put it (laughs) out there that's cute like (laughs) (laughs) we're we're not saying you're gonna do it we're just saying you can (laughs) Hadrian and Bailey could, you know, do their own thing, you know, and put it out there. Oh, we've moved the technology over into the hands of the layperson, so they can literally create anything, make anything, you know. True. And so I, I kind of don't know how much more of that will continue on. I, what I think is more stimulating for people now is the immediacy of the now without the actual mm-hmm. interaction. Mm-hmm. And more importantly, the control you can have over another person's pleasure. Right. So devices like uh, Love Sense um, mm-hmm. that react to uh, external stimuli, whether it be sound or on the app, you can give someone else a code and then they can actually control it and how mm-hmm. it reacts and acts to you. Um, like to me, like. Um, and then, like, fuck machines um, used to be, like, you know, or er, almost urban legend uh, kind of thing. And then now, you know, there's actual companies that um, make them, you know, and, and sell them. you could actually get a fuck machine on Wish. 
what? You can actually get one on Wish. I don't know yeah. if I want to buy a fuck machine yep. for like a penny on Wish. I'm just thinking there's <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. He, uh, he, that, 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 make, that makes me that makes me uh, wish for a no pun intended. Uh, wish for a uh, someone to come out with a a, a basically the uh, sex version slash kink version of a uh, 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 good eats. So it'd be like a uh, uh, good oh. sex. Do, 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 do. Oh, good oh. lord! And talk about the differences of of like like goes on dildos. <laughs> <laughs> How they're manufactured, what their qualities are, what the materials do, how they react. What the things you might want to look for. Yeah, which ones are the best for dishwasher usage. How Um, to properly (laughs) use it and properly clean it. Oh, my God. You want to store it in an airtight container. (laughs) Anyways. Yeah, I mean. I I mean, Good Eats has returned. So, you know, it's on my mind. Obviously. In fact, it might be airing right now. Um, yeah, I mean, I, but I think that, you know, that's that's more what people are like, because we've shifted into this immediacy culturally, like the whole I got to have it. I have to have it now. I have to be like stimulated in the like in the immediate and have that like instant gratification. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. that that's a big aspect of what will come to the forefront for people how how do they do that you know right. like like if i'm you know i mean and and conceptually this like will work really well for people that are in relationships especially if they have to be apart from each other for distance or time because there was a thing called you know phone sex uh mm-hmm. at a certain point where you actually spoke over the phone and said things you know while you were like away from each other and then that turned into like video chat um you know video calls and like which is where, just you know, phone sex with video well, I mean, there's there was just audio, and then we brought the video and the audio components together. The technology has gotten better. So in theory, with 5G, you will literally have streaming anything at any moment, <laughs> you know, regardless of, of who, what, where, when. Oh, there will still be buffering. <laughs> <laughs> there will still be buffering. Who knows? It Honestly... kind of depends, you know, if governments allow you know, to make it, you know, who can afford the best gets the best. Just, kind of just a quick side note here. The, speaking of 5G, if if you're an AT&T customer and you look at your phone and it says 5G E, that is not 5G. That's just LTE with some technology to help make it faster and more reliable, but it's not 5G. Okay. AT&T is lying to you, but we won't get yeah. into that. So I know that something that 5G would enable is, you know, like PBXs in the cloud sort of thing. So the old party lines from the 80s and 90s that people used to do, you know, your 976 numbers. and uh-huh. But that could transition to more of a FaceTime situation where somebody could connect people to multiple baseline, FaceTime lines where somebody you could call into a system and it randomly connects you with a person you have to interact with. So the porn can move in that kind of direction where porn is more one on one again. Instead mm-hmm. of it just being when somebody produces a video and it's the out revival there, you can chat you can I don't even get FaceTime with someone, not just on Chatterbait. Mm-hmm. So maybe that is the future. Like maybe the future is like the technology will will allow for real time cloud based orgies. There we go. Yeah, that's that seems like a possibility. I really there. like how like watching you, Hadrian, like turn the wheels and th- and think that over and be like. Yeah, when you yeah, introduce yeah, gamification and other things, yeah, absolutely. That's exactly the kind of thing you could create. That seems like a lot of hardware setup, but it's possible. I mean, 3D people device. Are willing, people yeah. willing to put up with Oculus Rift. Why wouldn't they put up with that? Well, I mean, that brings a whole new meaning to multiplayer. Uh, <laughs> 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 Multiple yeah. players playing Strange Flesh. God. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know about that, but anyway, it's I mean, real time. Insight type orgies with your hardware. Oh, That's, that is a concept. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me do, they do can think fuck that, you okay. from and all human, across human the nation. Hardware interface is coming. I mean, right now we have we have mice and we touch the screen and that sort of thing. There could come a day where it's much more integrated to the human neurological experience, where we. Are able to think and make things happen or even have feedback from that sort of system i mean that's 
brings up a whole new world of privacy concerns. But this probably isn't even our, this is probably in our great grandchildren's future, but who knows? There's all kinds of sensory input that could occur if we can extend the human neurological system. So uh, a bottom gets Adrian. two tops on the line and they're virtually DP'd. Mm. Well, no, but that's what I was just thinking is like, maybe that's like the future is the technology is, you know, that, yeah, we do get chips planted in us or whatever, but the integration of that technology means that you don't physically have to touch another person. We, like we, we, you have we, the we, sensation, but you're not physically with them. It, be, it becomes uh, uh, like demolition, man. Yep. Three seashells. Wow. No, because I was just thinking about it. I'm like, how interesting would that be? Like, George Lucas's THX 1138, I still think is an amazing film conceptually in that it was about a uh, dystopian future kind of concept where, like, like, things didn't have meaning. Like, they had meaning, but they really truly didn't have meaning. So, like, the concept of commerce, like, you went and you bought something and then you brought it home and then you basically immediately threw it away because you just bought a bubble. Like, it doesn't really do anything or mean anything. And I always think back to that about, like, the future of where we're going to be and what we're going to do. And so, Hadrian, hey, like, what you were talking about, I was like, oh, like, how wild would that be? And unfortunately, probably people would, like, really love that because – we're, I think society-wise, we're becoming more and more like introverted. Like we don't want to be with other people because yeah. we're so self-consumed and worried and about what that means. Like to be with another person, you know. To it's about rubber band. I mean, people are coming back from social media and they're pulling in. Mm-hmm. Like, no, no, I really don't know what I want to share out there anymore because I don't know how this is. This information is being used. So mm-hmm. there may come a time where it can be represented and people can explore deeper things because it's. It's secure, and I know that my little search for boobies isn't going to get isn't being gobbled up by someone and put into a metadata that they're they're tracking me with. You know, yeah. people want to know that they can explore safely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that. it, it doesn't can, help when I keep getting the experience being introduced and keep people safe. It doesn't help when I keep getting ads for Zola, which is a wedding planning website. <laughs> oh. I was like, "What the hell is so loud?" Wow. Oh, oh. And, and and also ads for Fabletics, which frequently is about women and leggings, and I'm like, not interested. This this is this is called the ads I get on YouTube TV. Yeah, <laughs> and all the ads that I get on YouTube TV, Humera, <laughs> a whole bunch of different drugs. It's well, it's awful. Well, you're not you're not far from the subject there. You know, those are the kind of ads that will be. That's why public. I want to be tracked, <laughs> so they <laughs> actually give me good ads. Right. So Pornhub could say, "Hey, did you know? Hey, your 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 insurance company is Kaiser Permanente. You know, Kaiser Permanente has a great sexual health program. Maybe you should go get tested and come check things out. You know, it's just kind of a why can't yeah. why can't my real life have ad space on my my in in the things that i consume and in, in all of them not not just the ones that they want like freaking overdoing it on youtube why can't they come for me on my porn space too and keep me safe God. so yeah. as as we see porn as less shameful we will allow advertisers to power these industries by yeah. making them more legitimate yeah all i'm getting on there is 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 uh, take a survey see somebody get a cock up their ass or uh just a lot of ads for bluetooth which, as of right now, I don't think I have erectile dysfunction, so. But it's necessary. probably on your mind now. From your age, that's what it, yeah, trust me, those cranked up about 39 as well, about 38, 39, mm-hmm. they started right in. Guys, I really? see it all the time. I uh, suppose, you're right. It's a thing now. Well, I think we, we, we may, for, may still call uh, ourselves cubs, but we're old. <laughs> Well, but that's I was just about to say, though, like that's the upside, though, like in another five to ten years, the chemical base that makes up those ED products, though, will end up going to generic. So you will be spending as much money if you legitimately need them. Well, well, I, think, I think, blue, yeah, because like blue chew is basically the same active ingredients as like in Viagra and Cialis. I know because I see the ad all the freaking time. And ads never lie, ever. But anyways, anywho, but it, it literally but, says things the same actor. No, I know, I know, I know. But I also saw a headline about how somebody like just got brought in by the FBI and like the DHIS or whatever for one point two. Yeah. Starting at twenty dollars so, a month. Imagine that. I'm literally looking at an ad for Blue Q right now. Just I'm just you know, there's two on this site. I'm just, oh my god! Seeing the plans. 
And it, yeah, so it says says this is the active Jagger in Viagra. But anyway, this is the active I- ingredient in Cialis. Yeah, when it when they mix it, no, no, no. When it comes part of a Metamucil <laughs> powder pack, I'll be interested, maybe. Like, oh my god. Wow. So, so you don't want to <laughs> chew it. Blending things together in the future, like you know. <laughs> you, so, so you're basically <laughs> saying you don't want to chew it. You want to, you just want to drink it. God. Well, I'm like, if I uh, why like put the two of them together, you know, like for the for the fifty, sixty, year, seven year olds that need that fiber as well as that fiber. Well, right, and so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I I, I I don't think that worked very well, Damon, but uh, nice try. Yeah. So it's just, uh, well, I, pl- I applaud your effort. First of all, yeah. it'll be the flavor of whatever the, the flavor of the thing is at that time, because flavors come and go. Like Chipotle was a big thing for a while. Then SIE Berry was a thing for a while. Like something else will come along and we'll be like, oh, this is all the rave. So it'll be a drink that has whatever the flavor of the thing is at the time. It'll probably have a significant amount of protein. So you feel full. It'll have fiber. So it'll help keep you regular. And then they'll just, you know, add some of the ED stuff to it, you know, because then, you know, you got it all going on. Yeah, no, that's not allowed until the- <laughs> okay, you'll have but have that nonsense until we do something for her. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't get to show up at Starbucks with flavors. Uh, <laughs> ladies can't take care of their business too. Well, okay, and this is me being dumb because I am, uh, because I'm very much not familiar with with uh, uh, the, the the opposite gender. Um, uh, being a cis white male, um, what issues would women have, or how would with the equivalent of ED? Huh? Birth control is not as readily available as Viagra. Uh, which is stupid. There you go. Yeah, birth control is one. There are so, other so the blue, the blueberry, the blueberry is for the guy, <laughs> and uh, oh the the cherry is for the girl. And, and oh it's just, God, so they bad. have this nice little smoothie beverage and they click click together and they both drink up and uh, she's birth controlled and, and, and he's hard as a rock. Wait, so I just realized something. Why hasn't this happened yet? Why hasn't a pharmaceutical company created <laughs> protein shakes that like do exactly these things that we're talking about? Yes, you need your prescription, but you could actually get them. To, uh, <laughs> supposed to do you can't you can't introduce them the, the FDA wouldn't allow that that's there's a whole long list of reasons why trust me they're stupid oh bullshit if i could go to sam's club and i could buy as much protein powder as i want or i could buy all of these other drinks there's no reason why you just can't put a medicine in it and then sell it like via the pharmacist there's no reason you can't it can be done oh, oh, i don't girl. agree that the fda wouldn't necessarily agree to it it, it does have <laughs> to be approved by the fda it just has to be oh, it just has to be money in it. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. And look if women were willing, really... oh yeah, that's the that's actually the easier way. Is you need to fund campaigns. But like, think about it though. Like, if you could go to your pharmacist and be like, you know, can Lobby. I please have the the mango banana, you know, power pack or whatever, and you walk out with a case <laughs> of thirty beverages that you drink once a one a day every single day, you know. Well, that's something else porn gets to do as well, is do that kind of advertising space. I mean, Viagra caught on. Yeah, it was it was known about, but it took a little while for it to catch on throughout the Southeast because people just didn't know what the hell it was. And that also helps for other forms of sexual health. For example, one day in the future, there's going to be some new STD that's going to pop up on the scene we're going to have to deal with. And the sexual health education system we have built into the, the tube sites and all of porn can very quickly disseminate that information because you can have a bunch of porn stars talking about it and saying, hey, I used to take Truvada, but we're throwing that out the window now because now we're taking Truvada 2 or whatever, <laughs> whatever the next hot thing or we're back to using condoms again, everybody. Come on, let's get this on this. Let's get back on the train. So you, you yeah. now have this built-in support system that can disseminate information mm-hmm. not about the hottest new sex toy, but also the hottest new sexual health. Mm-hmm. See, I'm a big fan of that idea, that concept. I know it sucks sometimes because you don't want to, people don't like to think about it, but that is the thing. Like, you have to think about it. Yeah. You know? We don't have to deal with Shishi LaRue screaming at us to wrap it up anymore. Because <laughs> it's like, or whatever's going on. It doesn't have to be one very loud, screechy voice. 
we have a we have a whole community that's open enough to talk about this sort of thing. Mm-hmm. I, I'm telling you, uh, Pornhub really needs to like it, it has to be like multiple different versions for reasons. But they really need to do the a, a, the equivalent of of uh, the sex slash kink version of Good Eats. I I swear they really need to. I think they would be the perfect one to do that because they're the one that's advertising for pretty much everything and doing even charity work uh, for things. And they're making they. I'm not sure. I haven't looked deeply enough. They've been making a section for for educational videos, anyways. Now, if they just did in the style of Good Eats, I'd probably watch. And especially if one version had a bear doing it, a chubby bear. You let them know, girl. <laughs> I am right here, live on air. Do it. This isn't anyway. Twitch, so you can't like clip that and send it. You you have to like click the whole video, but you can. But when the video comes up, you can actually just like find the marker and you know when you do the share link, you say so you start at that time and send a link. So yeah. So. Something I thought was interesting for the immediate future of mm. porn that I've been enjoying. It's, it's been going on for a while, but I'm wondering how far it can expand. And that's uh, a particular stream of videos called Popper Pig Videos or something like that, where it's a guy who takes you through a guided tour of poppers. And he shows you these different montages of videos. He like over inundates you with videos. And then he has this little little icon in the lower right corner that tells you, hey, get your bottle ready. Okay, inhale for X number of times. Whatever that means, I don't know how to use poppers at all, and I don't advertise anybody to use them at all. But this video is not- <laughs> <laughs> disclaimer. So, but it tells you what to do with your poppers, and you do it with the timing on the video, and it tells you when to inhale, when to let it go, and that sort of thing. And it it, it gives you different types of porn and overlayers them and shows you all the cum shots at one time. And it's like a cacophony of bear porn and other kinds of porn, too, that this guy's mm-hmm. put together, and there's moaning in your ears and... And dirty talking and that sort of thing. So it's very much a uh, a, a multi sensory experience to say the mm-hmm. least. Best to be to, to have like earbuds or you know something yes. so that's right in, in your ear instead of like just having it playing through your TV or your HomePod or something like that. Yeah, my neighbors I, don't. I, <laughs> your what? My neighbors don't need that. Oh yeah yeah yeah. I, plus, I plus, the sens- say- plus it's part of the century thing you need to kind of it, it's better sound if it's just going directly into your ears versus going yeah. through the room so i have I, I i know of these videos i have seen these videos yeah i have participated in said video i think it's all right very so i'm experience. very intrigued by these videos we need some familiar. links to put them out no i don't know i'm like I'm intrigued by this little popper pig Chiron thing Hold that on. pops up and like tells you. What don't to don't do. worry, Damon's about to have one. In, like three, two. No, it ain't gonna be that. No, fast. no, no. So All here's right. the thing. Here's the thing. Like, I just want to watch it to like see it because like I I don't do that substance. Um, it's of no interest to me. Like so, like, but I'm just I'm really curious from it, an educational it, standpoint. It, of like, I'm just beating off to it. It's a lot of fun. It, I mean, without that, that you can ignore the meter and just enjoy the videos. Yeah, and you don't I like necessarily that, have to pop her for it. So I've seen a couple of them. much fucking porn on the internet that we can now have these compilation videos where everything's just being thrown at you. I imagine that there's a there might be a place for this and other you know. I mean, straight porn and other stuff where you can just get inundated with all the best porn of a particular genre. Yeah. I know there's compilation videos, but taking yeah. a step further and actually edited together. Well, as there, we learned I mean, in like, the last tri- episode, Hadrian does not want to watch that of himself. So, tri- right. I mean, tri- Triple XL in... per- Productions yeah, did do their big days. shots videos. Well, see, that's different because that's I mean, it's it, it is shot. different, but I mean, it's still technically a, a compilation. I did say that okay. right. Yep, I yes. caught it. Hold on, um, so, and um, I'm surprised this is taking you so long. <laughs> there you go. Beep beep. I can't Copper piggy thicker is better. July of twenty eighteen. Okay, we'll have to go look that's, that up. Watch that's it. What of did, did, yeah. did I already like that one? I'm wondering. I, I just I just hope it doesn't auto play. No, that's not supposed to open up the other Skype window. It's supposed to keep this regular Skype window. <laughs> um. 
I probably will not share that with the live chat. Sorry, folks. Um, <laughs> I oh, will, however, nice share too. it with our entourage group. You guys can Google search. Also, you can Google For search. educational purposes. Yeah. There's a reason why I read See, off I some of what's in the URL. <laughs> Look at you. Go. Um, so, uh, so I'm not yeah. sure. That, maybe, this, maybe it's a flash in the pan, and maybe it's not. But there seems to be this seems to be something that people are very interested in is being able to. And I and I will even say for a fact there was a bear event here. On the oh, West this Coast is the entire user too. Aired, you can, and they got a room full of people to come experience this porn together. Oh, really? Well, yeah, come together I, with their with their little VHS head cleaners and their VHS tapes they wanted to clean in a room together. Sure, right, of course, yeah, of course. I, I th- uh-huh. this was this. Are, are you referring to that <laughs> one that uh, Bear Films did? <laughs> no, 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 no. He's saying that they actually showed this video in a room with a bunch of people. Oh, okay. So I on, do the know- official, on the official schedule of said event, there was a VHS cleaning activity in a room, and everyone was <laughs> asked to bring their cleaner with them. <laughs> Got it. It's VHS part of the VHS historical VHS. pornographic, uh, you know, society. society. <laughs> As they're they're preserving the poor yes. for future generations. So that, those those VHS tapes need to be cleaned. All well, and, and preserved because Everybody. you know eventually they will break and fall apart and not work. I anymore. know they will. Yeah, that's so true. That's for the ice cube trays. Did y'all see the? Did y'all see the tweet from Southwest Air? I'm Wait. I'm posting. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hold up. Anyway, shady yeah. scandal shit or scandal. Ooh, question <laughs> mark. Yeah. <laughs> How long ago was this? It's not that scandalous, but it's scandalous. Oh, girl. As we as we wait for the link. Yes, or it's, it's an image. I'm posting it right in. Here is some popular songs by the Human League. <laughs> <laughs> so hey Siri, stop! Somebody on Twitter wrote Southwest Air. So did we? Did we or did we not find out we can take poppers on our carry on? Hey, Siri, Southwest Airlines stop. responds directly and says, Jesus. Thanks for reaching out to us. Currently, TSA does not prevent passengers from bringing video head cleaner in their carry on. <laughs> Come on, love- man. You know the lingo. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, my phone. Where is the date? Where's the date timestamp on this thing? Though? <laughs> there isn't one, but. Um, I think a friend of mine sent it to me directly. I think they actually saw it live. Oh my god! I I, I can't right now. I'm because <laughs> it's funny because you know as someone who travels usually like around their birthday and is going to have fun in some other cities, I tend to think of this question. Although I normally don't take a carry on, so so <laughs> if you're bringing your VCR head cleaner. You, you you just put in your Video luggage. You're just tightly wrapped, maybe in some bubble wrap or something, <laughs> instead of your your carry on because it's not like you need to use it on the plane. <laughs> Although that would be a porn. <laughs> it has been. Although it would be it would be really hard to record. <sighs> you you I mean, would you would need for... to 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 get it most likely if there was a porn uh, uh, of this happening when they record recorded such a thing they would have like a, a, a temporary leased out the thing and uh, it would all be actors and uh, the plane would never actually leave the ground <laughs> 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 they would just pretend that it's in the air. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure they've done that many times. Okay, so I have so FYI, I have seen a porn called Night Flight, in which they were. It was from the '80s, and it is essentially a porn in which they are on a plane, and then they go, they land. But the main start, of, main part of it is on a plane. Now, this is not a like U.S. you know flight. This is obviously our U.S. Airways. This is obviously a fake, like this is a set. Because the bathroom was huge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you could fit three people. You could, like, it was a, yeah, it was clearly not a, like, 
an airport or an airplane bathroom. It may be in an airport bathroom, but it was not an airplane bathroom. So fuck that shit right there. Um, and then they're doing it on the scene. That's one thing I'm glad that isn't the future of porn because I'm glad we're out of the phase where it seemed like everybody wanted to see where they could get away with having sex. Like same thing was like same thing was cathedral, um, and in churches and playgrounds and all kinds of weird shit that people were trying to get away with. And the White House lawn. I mean, I'm like, okay, guys, you know, we really just you can have sex at home and it's still art. You don't have to go mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah. So at least we're past that phase of porn curiosity. We're we're basically and okay porn. if if they're recording the, camera, the porn in the hotel room. Yeah. So uh, just so everybody's aware, uh, because I had to follow up on it, the Southwest image tweet that Hadrian was actually reading off to us, that tweet is not available anymore. It disappeared (laughs) from their official account. But the one that started it from room temp fleet that says, so did we or did we not find out if we could take poppers in our carry-ons still exists. It was September 5th of this year. And then someone replied to that and said, uh, yeah, about that. Once I was pulled aside at TSA check as my bag failed the explosive test and I had to have a bomb expert check it out only to find, quote unquote, video head cleaner residue was on the bag. Uh, I'm going to call shenanigans, but maybe. They said that stuff contains nitrates, nitrites, and will get you searched. So don't carry on. And I'm like, well. Don't carry on and pack. And and, pack, and when you pack in your bag, make sure it is safe and wrapped in stuff to keep it from breaking. Uh, it, uh, yeah, we'll have to and make sure it's shit. tightly closed. Yes. And make sure you test that closure, too. There's a certain batch of my favorite... Uh, VCR video. head, <laughs> yeah, VCR head cleaner that uh, that did not have a very good lid on it. So I will say this: uh, I'm thinking they're not allowed to be brought on because they are flammable. That's the key thing. Probably <sighs> on a carry on. Yes. Right. Anyway, moving right along. Um, future porn. Let's 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 get back to topic. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I Apparently, think we Sunday because we, we kind of like. <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest. Well, that's one of the futures of porn was talking about the the popper piggy ish videos. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the future of porn is also so. I think the future of porn right now is heavily linked to the future of the internet and the change in some of the rules and laws that govern the internet and changing of the liability of who posts what and who can be sued for it is is chipping away at that right as well. That some of the things that we take granted as far as anonymity and being able to post things are under threat. I think Twitter is gearing up for a massive campaign against porn. Uh, Instagram already did theirs. Facebook did it a long time ago. T- Tum- Tumblr seems to be vacillating. I don't know. They changed ownership recently, so yay for them. Tumblr? You guys know that? Oh. Yeah. They, yeah. Them. Did they actually get purchased? Because yes. I know yeah. I know Pornhub was interested in purchasing them. Uh, w- WordPress bought them, surprisingly. Oh. Huh. Good to know. It was very quiet. I was hoping Pornhub was going to get it, but no, WordPress got it, which is which is a positive. They're they're a good good company, so they've been they they know how to work out the rules. Does so that mean we can we can create our own like tumblers? Like we can do our own WordPress sites? <gasps> I can install Tumblr on CubsOutloud dot com. <laughs> I'd imagine they'd do something. They bought it for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. It was a. Uh... August 12th. That's interesting because Tumblr at one time back in 2013 sold for $1.1 billion on Monday. uh, This is back in August when it was, this article was written. It was sold or bought for just $3 million. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fuck you, Verizon. (laughs) Who knows? Automatic may may actually be like, Hey, remember that whole porn thing? Yeah, whatever. But, uh, people are posting porn freely nowadays. I, I think they were trying to use some sort of third-party tool to filter it all out, and that third-party tool did not work. Mm-hmm. So, it doesn't. We're, we're gonna we're gonna get all the details about this in a few years as they leak all right. out. But I'm I, gonna I'm gonna oh. check out like my Tumblr account right now. So Automatic like. is the name of the company that owns WordPress. It's yep. uh, got three T's in it, so it's Auto, and then Matic has two T's back to back in it. Apparently, is the owner. So. Not a whole lot is necessarily known about what will come of it, but hmm. help the internet, help porn, and you know, I know there's dark web and other stuff like that. But 
hopefully the internet porn should not be pushed into that realm it really should be freely available as, as a, a, a recognized form of expression of course i believe that mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah funny. this is too funny so uh after the axios editor dan premack reported that tumblr sold for less than three million one twitter user quipped simply tumblr's porn blogs could have literally had a gofundme and bought the entire platform <laughs> right yeah, but you would still need like people to manage it and such. Right. That does why I feel amused by it. I'm like, uh, I don't know. Verizon didn't want to sell it to someone that was going to backhand them like that. They wanted someone who would be quiet about the problems they've exerted over the platform. And WordPress probably agreed to that. Yeah. Oh. Interesting. Because that was one of the things that killed AOL even further was all the stories that came out after the failed uh, NCI WorldCom AOL merger. Or AOL Time Warner. That was it. Mm. No, I'm still seeing the. It looks like your post may be in violation of our community guidelines and is now hidden post still. So it doesn't mean that like it it's not all happened. of them, but every... it's there on a frequent. Uh, yeah, even my own ones. Well, that's so, at least the immediate future future of porn. We can't post the Tumblr. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all my stuff's there. I could still look at it, but that's about it. Anyways, that's beside the point. Anyways, so what do you think? Is that the end? Sounds like it. Do we need a part yeah. four? I don't know. Oh, God. Gary. The far from future report. <laughs> Immersive, like. In the future, you'll travel at the speed of light and have sex with yourself in the future. Well, I, I mean, Owen did ask, did did I already miss the VR porn discussion? I think we t- talked a little bit about that in in a very vague, not directly VR-ish sort of way. Uh, but it, like, <laughs> don't try to make that happen. Um, kind of, kind of like I, me putting in all my bear profiles. I put in my bear code. Uh, but uh, and we already talked about that. <laughs> I don't I don't well, know if that's really going to become a thing like I think VR has kind of fallen flat like I, it's I think it's like there 3D. for gaming but I don't think it's there for much else and I don't know if it ever will expand beyond it's possible I think it, it you know the right circumstance and the right amount of technology and money you know people can make things happen. It's, yeah. you know it's not it it could potentially happen it could be a future possibility i could see it being a fu- possibility it's been like in the movies for like years like total recalls and things like that where that's kind of the thing where you go into this virtual world and you're Demolition playing man. with whatever and video yeah. games this has always been hyper realism the goal has mm-hmm. always been to walk around the room in the video game and i'm sure that mm-hmm. the porn's not far behind that which opens up a small floor discussion about the concept of deep fakes where mm-hmm. You, how long is it going to be before you can just program who you want in and you can direct them in a porn because the computer hardware is powerful enough to create a virtualized representation of what you want that can convince you. When it, what mm-hmm. happens when the uncanny valley has been busted and people can select any any celebrity they want. And I, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it will be pervasive until we have holodecks. Well, because then I could just order yeah. up the the plethora of bearmans, uh, have them make a oh my God. have it a uh, program in a sling, and we'll be I'll be set <laughs> at least for that. Well, I mean, like private but, little but session. We get, and it will be perfectly point, safe because you, you because they're all virtual. You know, it'll be a holographic dick to go into your ass. <laughs> That is until there's a uh, malfunction on the holodeck, and then you have to call Janeway or five, you know, seven of nine seven or seven nine to help you. Okay, so, now we are in part four territory. Um. Well, <laughs> well, but so, but this is the thing is, I think before you get to holodeck term like concept, I think what we'll be bridging together is possibly VR with sex dolls or devices, like something that brings something that manifests reality that is not reality, like. Sex dolls are on the rise. Sex dolls are being made. People are spending buku bucks for replica 
of not just pieces of anatomy, but like entire individuals. And I'm not talking about like what you go and buy it, like, you know, at adamandeve.com or the lion's den, <laughs> um, you know, like it would be the haptic, f- the haptic feedback suit that you would put on. It would be relatively skin tight. Uh, so whenever the virtual <laughs> person is touching you, you feel it while you have your eyes covered with the VR headset. Because I, 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 you know, that's a lot of work. And I think there is still the basic human need for some sort of real live human contact. Yeah. Correct. Like, oh, fucking Agreed. Work. I think we're overestimating. I think because I think there's a backlash to devices coming where human contact becomes wanted again, at least in a way that's safe. When we finally gotten over the hurdle of the hypermasculine bullshit we dealt with for the last fifty years, and people know they can hang out in, a, in in public without getting rape jokes or or cat called or someone showing up with a with a semi automatic weapon, I think we'll see people wanting to actually hang out in public again. Mm-hmm. And maybe I, you won't I... need this kind of extreme hardware experience to to just simply get off. Yeah. I disagree. Oh. I think you don't we're think the I, humans are going to come back together. You don't think that the future of sex is just sex with each other? I because don't. Because we have the medical technology to keep ourselves safe. I don't. I don't have the confidence in that. And the reason why is because of how many people are turning to the internet in order to get off now. Why would they move away from that when it gives them exactly what they need? Like I think less and less people are even using Dialedic. Like I don't think many as many people are using apps anymore to hook up. I think there's more and more. Can I get what I need, what I want in this in this immediacy, instant gratification thing? Because like I got to go to work, I got to leave in like 15, 20 minutes. Can I get a quick you know yank off? And I think that that like takes precedence over all the rest of the stuff. So I don't really know if like people will collectively in the future kind of, you know, go in a different direction. I'm not just, I don't saying that it can't happen, but I'm admitting my own limited view based on where things are today in the short term future. Mm, Basically what you're saying here is yes, there's going to be a part four. (laughs) Cause that's the discussion for another show okay you know, i, I hate to say this i have to leave it an hour 15 minutes the internet, i can lead that yeah i have to leave it an hour and 15 minutes so i hate to say this but yes this is the end i'm sorry okay. um uh, sorry uh, anyways uh play ways to contact us you know the drill comes out dot com. comes out at gmail.com voicemail sexy or otherwise 361 seal will talk Three six one two six five eight two five five. Various social media outlets that comes out loud in the appropriate place of the URL: Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, you can join our entourage chat where you can link to that popper piggy video at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Subscribe to our Google Calendar to find out when we're doing these shows, which will be switching to days uh, quite frequently because my schedule is changing. Uh, at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col on a computer because it doesn't work on mobile devices. Uh, you can get merch such as a sloppy bottom 23 shirt that Gary's wearing. A now that you're sticky, here's your cookie shirt that Damon is wearing. Or this uh, version 2 um, uh, it comes out loud logo shirt that I'm wearing, as well as various other merchandise at sessel.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, you can rate us on iTunes, subscribe to us on Google Play Podcasts and Spotify. Uh, find me anywhere in the internet that says box that box cup, box cup, box something or other. Ooh. Um, Theater Cub 79 or most bear related sites that you wish to find me are on Facebook, or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. You can pretty much find me anywhere online. It's Gabriel 73 xxx Except for you fucking bots on Growler. Knock that shit off. I'm real tired of it. Since you <laughs> sold your ass to another company, it's gotten worse. And by the way, go to Netflix and watch the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance like previous series. Oh, that's fucking really it's fun. amazing. Cool. Anyway. Hey, Adrian, where oh, can okay. people find you? <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of fucking information at once. TheAdrianShow.com All right. Uh, <laughs> why are you shirking, Adrian? <laughs> Mine's pretty easy. <laughs> and, like, with, and with that, <laughs> say good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Have a good one, y'all.